aim with, but ones that he has to say, this is going to work for these reasons, and that's what we'll do. And then the team kind of agrees with that. So well, a little bit different structure. And we're seeing a lot of top laners being able to play exactly what they want. And right. there's the, speaking of playing exactly what you want, <laughs> not Afro Moves is not going to get that this game. Though CLG right now, they're back on that rotational play, that rotational game with Afro Moose stepping up his shot caller with Link out of the roster. Yeah. So having that Bard and the extra rotational power, that would have been deadly in Counter Logic Gaming's hands. As strange as that is to say. There's some sneaky journeys that he could be taking to get himself Ooh. around the map. Rise will be banned out. Not going to see that from the hands of Zion Spartan this game. And the LeBlanc to control a bit of Slushy. So far, Counter Logic Gaming's bans have both been really good. Teammate. Cali Trolls, Aureli was the most targeted ban at yep. that top laner. I think most targeted ban in the entire LCS was at Cali Trolls and that Aurelia. Getting rid of the Slushy LeBlanc. And then teammate, they're really just going for control of what are the power picks right now that they do not want to play against. Two supports for Afromu that allow playmaking and rotational play and picks and getting rid of the rise. And that means they're not going to first pick it here, which is a little right. surprising. I was going to say more junglers going through and through since Either the junglers and NA can pretty much just put up a good fight on whoever they are on now. Gragas, however, does get hit. That won't go to Porpoise. We'll see what they decide to take. Probably something here for Cali Trolls in the top lane. Eyes on him on the camera right now. His Aurelia was banned out, so he does have quite a few options here as this champion pool goes quite deep. And if they're going to pick their top laner first and they didn't ban out the Rise, I really want to see what they go for here because they usually secure a power pick very early on, Boom. and it's the Callista there. For Nien, new to the roster, they're immediately going to use that first pick on this guy and get that, him a comfortable champion. That's a great point, Zyrene. It definitely shows that they have a lot of pressure, or not pressure that they can put on him, but they are safe in putting that pressure on him, I should say. Couldn't find the word. But he will have his chance at getting his first pick of Callista. We'll see what kind of support Dodo can give, as the Fates call will be imperative for them to really dodge out of these fights because it looks like CLG is going to put a fight comp together if they do go with this Yasuo. Yeah, that was the next thing I was thinking of. What are they going to combine this with? Dodo plays a really mean Annie. He also plays a good Morgana. And those are both things that are really good to use yeah. with Fates Call and bind with and also gives them some initiation power. So is CLG going to be forced to take one of those supports very early on and deny that? Or are they going to have to go with Aphromoo on a different type of playmaking sport? And there's Thresh coming out for him very early securing yep. a support for Aphromoo, a top priority. A little bit of that mind game for Zion to be hovering the top lane Yasuo. We know he can branch out to those champions and carry for sure from that lane. But they go with the Rek'Sai Thresh, as you said. Now to look for the second round of picks here from teammates. Seeing a bit of early jungling we know Porpoise loves to do, but that Gragas Rek'Sai, they're on the wayside now, and he cannot choose either. And that Thresh has been highly contested the last few weeks. Jat was talking about on the desk, 90% pick ban, despite what the stats said yeah. at the bottom, selectively. So the Thresh pickup here for Aframu gives him the playmaking potential, gives him the initiation. And Xmithy picking an early game present jungler, not going to for the Sejuani, not going for the team fight. Mm -hmm. They're going to play a little bit of a different game here. And I wouldn't be surprised if Counter Logic Gaming starts going for a pick composition. Well, it looks like they can protect the Kalista so far with what they've brought into the game. Sejuani and Maokai. So Kali Trolls is going with the safe tank this game. Something that the team can follow up on, and he's not going to go too deep without being able to stay alive. Yeah, and teammates so far, 100% team fight, initiation power, some damage across the board. And that's exactly what I thought was going to happen is the Sivir for Counter Logic Get Gaming right away. gives them a lot of pick potential. You can run it a flank, you can run it a side, but this is why teammate picked the Kalista first. Because the Kalista into Sivir matchup is a good matchup for Kalista. Mm -hmm. So Nian against Double Lift, he said he wanted to dumpster him. He might get his opportunity to, <laughs> unless CLG lane swap. He may. He did kind of retract the statement, but I'm sure it still lingers there in the back of his mind. You get the chance to, you're going to absolutely take it for Nian to take down double lift. Waiting for the last two picks here from Team A as we round out the fourth champion select of the day. It's been pretty quick back and forth. A lot of red side wins today as well. We'll see if that helps CLG out any with the momentum of the red. Could be the Yasuo here coming in for Slushy. Haven't seen too much of that from him. More control mages in that mid lane. We're just going to we'll see, see more round out whatever this this team fight competition is going to be. Oh. The Ziggs, the Nautilus, both very good pickups here for this team that wants to start fights. They yeah. want to poke and soften people up ahead of time. They do have the weakness, though, of what Krepo was talking about, the Exodia composition. All the parts need to be together in order for it to operate <laughs> effectively. The Maokai in a side wave is not going to be that great. And Count Logic Gaming, they have a lot of options here for their last pick. They could go full pick comp and have Pobelter play something along the lines of Cassidy. Yeah. They could go for 
uh, Twisted Fate here as well if they really wanted that global pressure. To, Ooh. And that's very potent. When you have a TP, you have a Rek'Sai, you have a Sivir, and you also have something that is teleport capable in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure on the map at all times, and if CLG get any outer ring and turret, any turret down, any of the three, there's an immense amount of pressure in that lane. And they're going to go for Poke here in their last pick. I was going to say the Twisted Fate might actually be something here, but Pobelter does go for the poke. Cassidy and even came up before Varus may have, but we have seen quite a bit of this from other regions, most recently again as well. So Pobelter knows how much it can affect the game and how much you can control the lane as well, just pushing it right back at Ziggs, right back at Slushy, so he can't push you into your turret. This is really good because the linear wave clear of Varus is very strong. Yeah. He's not going to get shoved in by Ziggs. He has siege potential, he has poke potential, and team fight at the same time. So Counter Logic Gaming, very good last pick there to round out this composition and give them that mixture of physical as well as magic damage across the board so they don't fall into the trap of the double AD. Great mobility as well. Seeing Smithy on Rek'Sai, you have the Sivir, you have the Rumble with a bit of speed up, and they can all get around these big tanks of teammate if they get these brawly death ball fights. Maokai, Sejuani, Nautilus, yeah, they're going to try to peel you, but if everybody's running around with the Sivir ultimate, it's going to be very hard to attack onto those people and shut CLG down. Zix Lol and History Teacher are giving a quick shake before they head to the back. As the teams get ready for this game, you can let us know who you think will come out on top by tweeting either hashtag T8Win or hashtag CLGWin to at LOL Esports. We're about to be heading into the game quite soon. The CLG looks to keep a good record going. wonder if History Teacher tells them any history-related things. Motivate them. Trench Warfare, guys. That's what this is all about. Eisenhower once said... <laughs> I don't know if that's his voice. No, probably not. Probably but not. Speaking of trench warfare, though, Nian, every time we've seen him in Challenger, he's typically in a lane swap. He ha Last time I saw him, it's all about lane swap. Get to that late game. Get to the point where Nian can yeah. actually be relevant in these team fights. All right. And Zion says Nian is an AD carry that gets by with a little help from his friends. Let's listen. I've seen him do really well on hyper carries like Jinx. He's kind of a player that just loves to farm a lot. So I think if he gets all that farm funneled into him, he can do a good job. But leading up to that point, he requires a lot of his team to set up for him. So I think it depends on how well teammate works with Nian as their main carry. And that's a very good thing to bring out. Bringing in someone like Nian or in general, someone that requires a lot of farm changes the dynamic of a team if that's not already the way you funnel your resources. Okay, and especially a team that has always been Cali Trolls is a threat, Slushy's a big threat, Porpoise Pops facilitates the top and mid lane. Yeah. Now you have another lane that we could consider actually a very high threat with Nian. Let's see where they get in here. We're going to see an obvious ward in the bot lane as both teams get what they want out of their forward wards here. Let's see what the jungle pathing can really trick either of these junglers into making a wrong move though. We saw it a little bit earlier with move, pretty tricky. Yeah, that was really just the execution of Cloud9 in that situation when there was a ward down. Really caught them off guard and put them in a lose-lose situation. When you end up in that 4v3 in the middle of a lane, there is no yeah. winning scenario <laughs> there after you've gotten to that point and they beat you there. Got to do a lot of wishing. Yeah, I said it on the desk. You had to be there about 30 seconds earlier to make anything happen. So you already oh. see the rotation oh. up here from Double Lift and Aframu. They may actually Jeez. run into a few members of Team 8. They are on that red right there. Counter Logic Gaming don't know that Team 8 is still in their jungle. And it's actually a lane swap too, and they're going to get both of the Krugs in the top lane. Dota's going to get taken fairly low here. Ooh, oh. Didn't see the war in image, no ping coming out. May see him. On the exit, their double lift hovered down a little bit, so they have the idea that they're in the same lane for sure now. Interesting little start there here. Let's see if this pays off for Team well, 8. Porpoise getting quite a bit of what he wants. The big thing they're going to get out of this is that Smithy is still heading towards his topside jungle to look at his rapid, right. look at his red, look what is still there, and it's going to waste some of his time. A big womp womp, that's for sure. He's going to check. Yeah. How many does he check, though? Does he go for all three, or does he decide they've taken the <laughs> I need to head out? And he does. Yep. He doesn't even try to go for Krugs right now. Yeah, he hasn't even done his blue yet. He just got his Gromp done and his Wolves, and then he moved straight up. That was actually that side of the jungle. pinged as well by teammate. Nicely done by them. Keeping control on Xmithy just by timing knowledge here. So 
all the safety in the lanes to them if they want to even go a little bit aggressive here. But things are still slow just three minutes into the game. Smithy will come out of this still pretty healthy, but how much impact he'll be able to have now here. A little behind. Yeah, when the situation happens, though, it's all about what is Porpoise going to do with his advantage he right. has. And honestly, he doesn't know he has this advantage just yet because usually the mm. jungler will go to your red. They didn't have any wards really around it. The, they have wards now on the uh, sides. So he's figuring now he knows. Down. Now he knows. Now he knows. So now he sees that he's half HP, Boris Pops half HP, Xmithy level three going into the jungle. He puts down the ward and now, there we go. Yep. Now we're gonna see what happens with these Raptors and in that area. Knowledge to everyone here. Porpoise already pinged over that he was making the move to come back in and save his Raptors. A good push in here from Pole Belter. Kind of kept Slushy at bay for a second, giving some Xm or get Xmithy some time to work with here. Ooh. Only gonna see Porpoise on it. Still actually hasn't taken the buff from the Raptor yet. This is really greedy from Porpoise Pops. Smithy's gonna get this buff, no problem. You can see Poe Belter is chunked Slushy kinda low, and he shoved the wave in. It's all about that wave clear. If Poe po Belter hadn't picked something with early wave clear, he wouldn't be able to pull off this move as effectively oh. against the Ziggs. That's a great job as well by Zion Spartan in the bottom lane, making sure that Kali Trolls can't come up and help either. Really good, just early pressure on the lane, setting CLG up a few steps ahead. Nothing but 100 gold yet, but it's the motion that they are trying to stop Porpoise taking that red early, and then the whole top side of the jungle. Seems like Smithy's fighting back already. Speaking of fighting back, Cali yeah. Trolls. Here comes Smithy, though. Smithy was on this side of the jungle. He hasn't left it yet. Burning down the tree. That red buff's Whoop. gonna get on him. It's gonna force a flash. The TP's already down for Cali Trolls. They just put a little more hurt. So that's 11 seconds and a long walk now for Cali Trolls to come back to the lane. Five minutes in, and that's going to be a kill going over to Zion Spartan on his rumble. Very nicely done by CLG to start things off early. Very strange tracking of junglers this game. Yeah. Everybody seems to be losing track of each other. Do I have this advantage? Do I not have this advantage? Porpoise Pops forced to back because of low HP. Smithy knew he was completely safe to stay, take the red, take the Krugs, and then he's like, oh wait, Kali Trolls went in, I don't even need to finish these, mm -hmm. and then go, and he gets his first blood in that bottom lane to his top laner, Zion Spartan. I was going to say, before all that came out, that this is actually pretty favorable for Team 8, the fact that they're in a game against CLG, they didn't get lane swapped on, they were able to call it. That's true. And CLG's not getting an advantage off the rotational play, but now... If it's not Afro move flying around, it's going to be a Smithy in the jungler's face, apparently. Not really something we have seen from him, as you were saying, but looks like it worked out here for kill number one and about a thousand gold lead. Still, a bit of a freeze here by CLG in the top lane as much as they can to deny Nien farm. And that's 42 to 29 already, and I don't think it's going to get any easier, Zion. Mean. No, not at all. In that mid lane, you're talking 54 to 38. Yeah, too. Ziggs versus Varus. Varus has a lot of early damage just with auto attack trading. Ziggs, of course, he does have the passive, but the big thing here is that he gets to continue to harass him through the waves, not have to worry too much about mm -hmm. wave clearing simultaneously because he does that. And now Cali Trolls, he has to worry about being too far forward. Yeah. The ward is going to help him out, but this mid lane is something I really want to focus on this game because CLG, they have Poe Belter now. He's been doing stellar so far, and he's been a pretty big part of how they've gone 2 0 up to this date. And up against Slushy on Ziggs, one of his best champions. We've seen the Ziggs and the LeBlanc banning the LeBlanc out, forcing him onto the Ziggs. Seems to be a good strategy here that's working out for them. Keeping Slushy down, something he can't really affect the entire game too much with, but still have a bit of power, make him feel like he can really play into it. And right now, CLG is going to take that for granted and try to take him down soon, most likely. They've already been twice down to the bottom, trying to get Cali Trolls out. Yeah, this game has been surprisingly standard the first seven minutes. Yeah. Despite the duo lane being on the top side of the map, it's really just been, can a jungler find an advantage anywhere on the map while continuing to farm and just letting the laners do their thing? There are a lot of moves going on in the jungle. People are losing track of each other. That's really the only thing that can be said about this game so far. So, other than playing safe lanes, when you're actually taking or, or this far behind, this early in the game, what's your best option? Is it jungler intervention or just continue to play safe until objective? Well, if you keep playing safe, you're probably going to get further behind. And True. right now you can True. see the end. He has the BF sword, immediately backs, goes down bottom lane. They're going to try to find an advantage here somehow, regardless of whether they're yeah. catching Zion Spartan with his flash still down. 
because look at this. You can see Double Lift is heading top. He's kind of been juked by this back right now because they assume that it is we're backing, we're BF swords, we're going wherever. Afro move though, he's not going to get called by this. And as soon as they show up in that wave, everybody changes their direction and they're coming straight bottom. Yep. You can see the cut through the base gate, through the top side of the map as they fly down. A bit of CS here can be grabbed by Nian, but it's going to factor in the same way it did when the lanes were duoed. You may see Double Lift start to grab a little bit of a lead there, but now Dragon is definitely on the table for both teams, and teleports are up once those laners get to their, or top laners get back to their turrets. And this is actually kind of a, a tiny thing that actually plays a lot into this, because Aphromoo, he wasn't walking straight towards the lane. He was covering the option of, if they do go bottom, right. I'm already halfway there. Double Lift starts walking there. Aphromoo is able to give him a long-distance lantern and help speed him up through a lot of terrain. And it's funny because like those tiny things don't seem to matter too much, but they do when it comes down to seconds and pushing minion waves and breaking freezes. Something we were talking about earlier, it's kind of going into the game and actually just walking a certain distance, knowing the average of that distance. Well, it's just like in that the... game that we were talking about with the great level one move by Gravity. Yeah. If Cloud9 hadn't done one jungle camp and you had been there a little bit earlier, right. that plan would not have worked. It's a game of seconds sometimes. See what they decide to go from here. Already have Slushy trying to pick up Wolves, get himself back in a little bit, starving out Porpoise from a, a bit of his, his jungle. Let's see if it pays off, though. Porpoise is hovering the bottom side of the map, but so is Xmithy. And we have sixes across the board here to be ready to be used in a fight. Doesn't look like Xmithy's actually going to keep himself going down just yet. It's going to be a transfer of the blue over to Pobelter, who's 96 to 89. Hasn't had too much of a reason to continuously pressure in Slushy, and he's also, with a little ability power, having an easier time in that lane. But yep. still every, every great early game. CLG, every lane of CLG has an advantage right now, yep. including the jungler, without jungle pressure in two of them. So the fact that CLG are just using their pure mechanical skill right now, and it looks like down bottom they're actually baiting this in. Mm -hmm. Corpus Pops is there, but they have they have a Thresh Lantern. We'll see what happens. I was going to say, if very interesting that Porpoise hasn't been down here more. That Callista pick was first for Nien. They're going to put a lot of priority into that. Here's the first time they actually try to do something off of it. Yep. Almost. And that's going to be a waste. A few flashes, I believe. Just, Just after one. moves. Yep. One flash. One flash. Fate's call. Mm -hmm. you all and these. TP. TP is the biggest spell that was really used there alongside that's true. the flash. Good call. Definitely something that Zion Spartan can use. He almost has his penetration boots up on that haunting guys which would make for a very nice dragon fight advantage here for CLG quick hop over the wall from McSmithy and he is in safety yeah, the end taking a lot forward. of damage there but double lift had already backed off thinking the engage would come from the side of team 8 almost taken down the end there now you always have to be cognizant of the Sejuani over the wall right flash, yeah Arctic assault throwing out the bola Smithy lied to me today. I saw him in the bathroom just before the game, and I said, what are you going to play? And he turned around, and he smirked at me, and he goes, Sejuani. And I was like, I think you're lying. And he did. <laughs> he did. Definitely faring better on this Rek'Sai. It's I good just... to pivot and champion select. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're like, Rek'Sai was left open. All right, that sounds great. Let's do it. He's been to the bottom lane a lot, making sure that actually Zion Spartan kept Cali Trolls down, the safe tank that Team 8 would have coming out of the later part of the game, still looking to protect Nian. BF Sword only for him onto an almost finished Infinity Edge here for Double Lift within probably three or four minutes as he's looking. I actually just went back to buy, so maybe a fight, maybe the Dragon. Yeah, the CS difference is equating to about 400 gold difference between AD okay. carries and jungle. And up top, it's about 1,000. Mid lane, though, very interesting one. It's even. It did Because they back. finally caught up to each other. Yeah. And you can see a lot of that is because Poe Belter, he's been getting the blue, he's been shoving up, but Slushy's really been stepping up now. Mm -hmm. Taking all the side camps that he can. Still Porpoise managing to keep himself in range of Xmithy's farm. And it looks like they do want this bottom lane. Aphromoo just able to walk right in. The Lanters was taken in, but I don't think they're gonna be able to get a kill. Yeah. No, they get Zion, or Nien rather, as Zion comes in with the death sentence from Aphromoo, and they're all gonna get an assist on that. The kill going over to Smithy. The time in the bot lane is paying off no matter who's there. At that point, it's really just take it for me so I can Fates call you back yeah. out. Instead, Nien eats the hook, and that's gonna be some wave clear there from Slushy, but 
really, the fact that CLG is able to pull off a move like that, you know the TP's down from Cali mm -hmm. Trolls, just converge bottom, the opposite side that you see Cali Trolls on the map, and you're going to get a play like that off of the engage. And if Afrim was landing hooks, you're definitely going to get those kills. And now everything going in CLG's favor. Top turret, yeah, grabbed by Cali Trolls. His perseverance pays off there in that lane against Zion, but the Dragon, number one, picked up by CLG here, just 13 and a half minutes in. Looks like we got Cinderhawk on both sides with a bit of a different path. But Sightstone just picked up by Smithy, so you can expect CLG to start pushing that vision forward, start being a bit more aggressive. Oh, very close to being able to take down Slushy. The flash in from Cali Trolls as well. And it looks like they are going to try to get this one down. Zion Spartan comes in. Cali Trolls can't do much. Thought Slushy was going to be able to help his teammate there, but Cali going a little too hard once again. Now Mega Inferno Bomb down from trying to clear the bottom right, wave, so right. he doesn't have it for that fight. Porpoise Pop's not in the area to throw down his ultimate either. This is a team fighting comp, and I talked about how they all need to be grouped up when they're yeah. having these engages. And if they're having these half-hearted, half-attendant, a half-attendance game, uh, team fights, it's not going to work out for them. Home guard is now finished, along with the sword boots for Zion Spartan. You can see the impact he had in that fight. And now they are going to start denying all the resources that they can. Counter Logic Gaming staying very steady at the clip they have been kind of taking down teams and being able to put themselves in the lead these games. Very methodical in their ways so far this split. But isn't that the way it always is? In the beginning, some, something seems to change when it doesn't have to halfway through the split, and then everything just gets altered. And they're just going to get this top turret too. They haven't even had to back since those last fights. Yep. We'll see if they can prevent that this split. So far, so good. Looking to take a perfect record here in the first two weeks, at least on day one of week two. Three to zero as they start off 15 minutes into the game. Looks like some of the CSs have been equaled out, just that mid lane and the junglers. But top and the AD carry, somewhere Nian was quite outspoken about. Definitely not working for him. Yeah, Slushy caught up in CS. He was getting a lot of the wolf camp. He's clearing the wave and spending his mm -hmm. time on clearing raptors, clearing wolves, getting whatever scraps of CS he can to keep up with Poe Belter. So far it's been working, but those turrets falling, that extra turret falling into the hands of CLG and that kill to Poe Belter yeah. is really going to deter that a tiny bit. But I want to talk about, Smithies right now is sitting at 100% kill participation, but it's only three kills so far in the game. It's been a pretty low action game. Right. And Porpoise Pops, he had an advantage at level one. He had an advantage off of the kind of called lane swap and the jungle take. Yeah. And then he wasn't able to press it because CLG reacted appropriately to that situation by shoving up mid and getting into that jungle. So Smithy was in a bad situation, but he's able to come out on top and he's made the best of it. And teammate have just been kind of crumbling under the lack of pressure in their own lanes. Right, it's almost they didn't have the audible for what if X Smithy figured out what we did in the early game. And now they're still trying to catch up from that instance, thinking that what they did would already have put them in the lead. This clawing back seems to be a That's little bit TP, harder. Though. Chain of Corruption coming out, double lift puts on the hunt on, as well as a little bit of a boomerang toss. Nice bomb coming out from Slushy. Huge damage on the team. Can Nian get enough spears in to finish them off, though? And it does not look like it. They're all putting up a huge wall in front of Double Lift and Pole Belter so they can continuously throw out the pole. Whoa! Whoa! Double Lift just gets taken down instantly by Slushy there. Satchel charged out, and they will continue this fight. Nian gets locked up. Flamespitter coming in from Zion, but it's just to deter the rest of the fight. He says back off. Pole Belter stays alive, but they trade one for one overall. Yeah, Slushy a little bit late to the fight, but he shows up mm -hmm. just in time. To that was great bomb kill. placement. They couldn't go anywhere else, but back right into the bomb. And Double Lift had already used his spell shield on the previous Sejuani mm -hmm. ultimate, blocking that one. And Pope is the only one who actually ate the son of it. Now, th I was actually just about to talk about that fight prowess that teammates team has. You still have two ADs on the side of CLG, easy to take down members and champions. So if you get a good Sej ult, Kali Trolls is on to one of them, you're going to have a good Slushy ult coming to follow up as well. They're going to have to get good fights from the side of CLG from what we just saw from Team 8. Yeah, they even up the turret Almost perfect count, though, engages. off of Team Fights. And yeah. Team 8, they need to group up. And as soon as they get to the point where they can group up against this team and force down objectives, but still cover the side waves, because that's crucial yeah. against a Rek'Sai who can shove them in, a TP, and having a Sivir who can just speed the team all around the map. Just not get poked to death before you fight anyways. Yep. <laughs> We're onto the turret. CLG! So not, gonna go after not really giving that much respect here. There it is. The turret's low. Chain of Corruption ooh. goes out, just misses. 
The equalizer is laid out. It actually separates the team. Neon's on the left. They're able to now just fight the tanks. Take them down as well. That's going to be two. Slushy and Cali Trolls fall to the ground. Now six to one for CLG as they kind of bait that one in. Very low health. Thinking teammate could take that one back, but CLG, they knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah, a lot of members hadn't backed since the previous skirmish. And right, they just stayed. They said, let's just get it. Pressure it. We have to fight. They had to stay because Xmithy, he used his ultimate to a tunnel to keep everybody there and just use his ah. Prey Seeker, stop backs, make sure that they respect that he is still in the area. They got the turret, got a little bit too greedy for it, and they had to just defend it. And they just stayed way too long. The turret was going down anyway. The flash from Pobelter into ulti and then the flash to counter it was really well played by both sides, but then they just shouldn't have been there that long. Two times a fight, 66 seconds on Chain of Corruption, so that's how long they were hanging out. A little bit more, I think he actually just came up on 11 there as well, so. Definitely a good amount of time, they knew what they wanted. CLG gets another turret, the three outers are now down. This is where they can start placing forward wards in. Smithy already making sure they have eyes on teammate. As Dragon coming up, that fight just happened 50 seconds ago and already they're going to be back at it. And they're able to, again, a lot of low cooldown ultimates here good from point. CLG. Teammate, summoners on both sides. Teammate, they like to fight, but CLG can still skirmish, especially with this gold lead that they've accumulated for themselves and their low cooldowns. As we approach these turrets, my eye is definitely on Kali, Porpoise, those tanks that can make the initiation happen. Ooh, chain was right there. Didn't Alphamu. quite connect on Porpoise, though. That was, that was very close. Uh, Aphromoo was going to be able to hit a hook on Dodo there, and they finish him off. But there's always a Fate's Call, so maybe they decided not to. Slow play. Looks like we actually could have Dragon just soloed out here by a few. Or, like, Smithy's down there covered by double lift coin, so couldn't see him. They're going to get Dragon, and they're not going to lose anything for it as well. This has to play on teammates' mind. Knowing they're losing objectives, knowing they can't just force down three members in the mid lane, it's all just too hard right now. They're looking for that fight. They're looking for that perfect fight with the Sejuani ultimate, the Ziggs ultimate, and Nien needs to hit some item spikes because he's got his yeah. he's got his bloodthirst. So true. Right? He's got no crit, and that's a big problem with Kalista when you have that one item and you don't have an advantage over your lane opponent because you need another item behind it. You need the attack speed to start leaping around the fight. Because right now he's a burst bot, and at the same time, he maxed E first which is very attack speed based in terms of stacking it as opposed to yeah. maxing Q first with the Bloodthirster. So going around some items, you can hear Slushy's Ludens Echo going off as he finished that along with the Morello Namicon. Four going boots completely right now, not even boots one. It, it gives so. movement speed. So. Well, that's true, <laughs> very true. It'll help him out a little speed bit. Speed of the Echo. Double lift, pushing bottom lane so safely. He's just got a wall of defense with wards and his teammates. Smitty is the last one there in the caboose of that defense, and they will pull out. This is great for them, though, having such a mobile team that can now go between the lanes in a shorter distance since they've taken down the outer ring. CLG putting down the pressure very well, just 20 minutes in, 6-1. to one. Baron's alive, but not even really anything on their plate unless they want to get a fight out of team. Oh, there's the pick. Bit of separation there. Fighting in choke points might be kind of tough for CLG in the jungle, especially with the amount of AoE coming out of Team 8 here. Decent amount Very of ultimate clone there. Careful. Sivir ultimate on the hunt and the chain of corruption from Pobelter. Both those down. They can still siege though. Slushy doing his damnedest to make sure the minions get damage as well as anybody else before they get close to the turret. They're trying to hold this outer or second outer ring. I really like this from CLG because they're going to shove this wave up as fast as possible. Yeah. They sent Zion mid lane. He has the TP. So if they get engaged on bottom while they're backing, he can just TP into that fight. Mm -hmm. But it also means the teammate now has to deal with a mid lane wave, a bottom lane wave, and they yeah. can't really continue to fight at the same time, which is really just kind of micro map play that they're using. And I really, really yeah. like that they're just trying to test these pressure points because if you misplay that and send like the wrong person mid lane or somebody else, one three right. people, and then you're like, oh, we have to clear top lane too, and you get complacent in that, then CLG jumps on yeah. you and punishes you with an objective take. Very easy to do that once you get in the lead. And CLG is being methodical about how they are going about things right now. Zanya's finished up for Zion Spartan. That's gonna be huge for him in these fights. They have pretty much been unstopped in getting to their items. 204, 104, 202. Only double lift went down because I think he closed his eyes in that bot lane fight for a second. 
And he just got blown up instantly by Slushy. Still can put out some damage, and we're still looking for the game-changing alt. But good Sejal hits. Still looking if Dodo can get a nice depth charge onto somebody in the back line. Gotta remember, 280 carries on their side. Eyes on Pole Belter still being one of those 80 carries in the new member of CLG. Very squishy 80 carries then. Yeah. You're able to reach them. And that's why I'm surprised that we don't see a second item, Righteous Glory coming out coming out from Porpoise Pops to help facilitate yeah. the fights. Going for the Giant Spell, possibly do a Randuins to deal with the double 80 carry. But so it does look way. like it's that time they want to bait this out. Just a few minutes ago, Baron had spawned, and now it's the reason CLG can start a fight. You see the pink board control around the area. And last time teammate lost a game last week, it was off of going into a Baron choke point, yeah. even when they had the advantage. So right now, they're just going to play the CLG pick game, Afro move, looking for those hooks, looking to start the fight. They do have Sivir, though, so if somebody's out of position, they just run them down. Still so difficult to fight. Even their tanks aren't that tanky yet. Porpoise does have that extra giant belt on him, but Kali Trolls is double ringed in that lane to try and stay alive from McSmithy, so his items have been put back as well just sitting on a bit more health. They have to back away from the majority of these fights right now. Two minutes on Dragon, something else CLG will be able to sink their teeth into when they want. Let's see what kind of items can come out of teammate here to kind of mitigate the damage from CLG. See the Aegis on the Dodo, gonna help a little bit. I mean, Zion's doing a lot of damage, but... Well, it's only gonna help against one person. Right, on yeah, exactly. Interesting buy there, but... Keep it alive. He is a powerful Burn rumble. it down. It's going very quickly. You can see right there in the bottom left corner, a thousand they HP. Come. Oh. Bomb goes out. And that's the spike to fight. Smithy. Fates call in. Fates call out. And nobody can follow up. Actually, on Porpoise's uh, Sejuani ultimate there. Aphromoo gets out. Still an Aphromoo. Hits back. A little bit of that flay damage probably to pop over onto Dodo and get the kill for himself. Kill secured. Zion Spartan trying to flame spitter over the wall. I believe he just... No, he did not try to flash, actually. That was the rest of the team. There he, he goes, now though. Now on to them. Nian and Slushy getting cooked up in the frying pan. Actually pops him forward for another hit there on the harpoon. And Zion Spartan making his way through. Another teleport to come up big on the fight. And Team 8 were almost kind of forced to keep checking that. CLG knew what they were doing. Yeah, as soon as they went to the opposite side of the map, it was an open bear, an open season there with all that damage yeah. that they have with double AD carry. It could shred extremely quickly, especially since you don't have a tanky top laner. You have a top player that's just contributing more damage to taking down yep. that Baron. They had so many pink wards around it. You can see three in it, and then they saw entrances, all the entrances to the Baron. The execution of the fight, though, was quite interesting because Poe Belter's Chain of Corruption really stopped the follow-up engage from the Sejuani ultimate. Yeah. Goes down, good ultimate from Slushy. Dodo a little too far forward, and this, you see right there, a little bit off the side, everybody's fanned out, but look at that. Nian can't jump anymore. He's Lock got him. the Chain of Corruption on him. Slushy gets Chain of Corruption then. He can't follow up. And that's how, that's how Avramu gets out with his life, and then they continue the fight. It looked like they wanted to back out, but Zion Spartan was just ready for more, and Nian forced the flash very early on because of the distance that Avramu had created. Melted. That's where the flashes came from. Looked towards the top of the river, and I saw Zion come in. Thought he hit the wall, but he knew exactly what he's doing. Scrap shield to catch up, take down two more members, and now nine to one. That one kill still being on the double lift. Went over to Slushy. All the other members of teammate hoping to pick up a few of those here as they defend the base. Counter Logic Gaming not giving up anything though, other than that one kill and just a few turrets here in this game. Three dragons to their name, 27 minutes in as they start knocking on the front door of teammate's base. And Smithy just feels comfortable enough to keep throwing Prey Seekers in and allow the team enough vision. This is a great example of an investment playing off. You can see Smithy, he, he got the kill on Zion Spartan early. Zion Spartan, 100% kill participation now. He's making such great TP plays. Yeah. When you get the Baron buff back and then TP back into the fight off of the Empowered Recall, you know that player <laughs> is definitely grateful for that first gank. He is just going off this game. Zion Spartan is having an amazing game right now. He's at the power point where he's yep. just shredding through both squishies and tanky targets because the tanky targets still are not tanky just yet. There's an Aegis of Legion, but that's about it. Yeah. You can see there's a Spectre's Cal for Cali Trolls, but now he's facing double AD carry. He has to prioritize armor at some point. 
Righteous Glory onto Cali Trolls. He can't really oh. get in with the team. A very nice There's snake bomb coming in. Double lift goes down. They can get back onto Pole Belter. He may as well. Like Smithy tries to tunnel out. Oh. Nice flame spitters harpooned over the wall from Zion Spartan as he cooks him up on the rumble. Equalizer, Pole Belter. Eagle Eye taking down Cali Trolls as he tries to step away from the fight. But CLG did not get through that one cleanly. That was so close for CLG. You can see everybody's health bar flashing on the yep. lineup. All their damage dealers, one of them even down. They can want it more. I think this is going to be Aphromoo going down. It may be a one for one. Zion Spartan may make it another. Nick Smithy with a void rush in as well for a little bit of assistance and security for the team. Looks like it's going to be a final wave clear by these guys, and they will be gone. 13 to 3 there, picking up four kills throughout that engage. And you can see the Righteous Glory there for Cali Trolls very early on. And that's what I was expecting from him. Yeah. That's why Formus Pops didn't go with it first time. That's right, actually my right. bad on calling that one. Because, yeah, you can see right there, just so much damage. The Zonia's popped from Zion at a really good time. But this hook over the wall to just keep the end over the fire. He was the big damage threat that was going to be yep. persistent throughout this fight. Since Lucian was running low on mana, if Nien had not eaten that hook, if he was able to stay alive, that would have been a completely different fight. All the cooldowns and everything coming up as soon as CLG needs him for these ones. Great hooks, great chains, and Xmithy being able to void rush back in as well. So you have pretty much two teleports if you need guys to come back into the game. Zion's just about to be up. Cali Trolls is up right now, but they'll be walking throughout their base, so he does not need to use it. Power in numbers right now for Team 8 as they try to find a little room to create an option for themselves. It's a very small window that they're trying to get through here, but something has to happen for them, or CLG is just going to push down here within the next 5 or 10 minutes. Yeah. Now that they're at the point where it's 10k gold advantage, they're mm -hmm. standing in a brush that's warded. A 10k gold advantage, despite having a compositional difference, is very hard to overcome. It would yep. have to be an absolutely perfect wombo combo onto the key members to get Poe Belter off the field and to get double lift off the field. And then, as time goes on and they buy QSS, yeah. it's going to be even harder to, harder to execute on that type of play. And when you're just banking on that one play, it's very predictable. And you could see yeah. when CLG did the Baron and they fanned out, and only one person in a spell shield got hit by the Sejuani ultimate. That's the type of play CLG is going to have because if you see it coming, it's so easy to predict it. Prepare for it yep. with your formation. Easily denied just with one spell their entire attack. It's what we saw before at Baron. Let's see what happens at the bottom side of the turret. Now that CLG starts to spread teammate thin. Nice ultimate onto the turret. They're going to be able to fight this for a while. I still see Cali Trolls Ooh. going down, but he lives. A little photosynthesis for him. Staying alive, 13 to 4 here. 30 minutes into the game. Great help from Porpoise coming through the life saving all. And Slushi as well, thrown in that ultimate. Porpoise pops with the save. Yeah. But it only buys them some time here. They're not going to get a whole lot off of it. There's no dragon up. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go fast. Oh. After all <laughs> that. Go this way. Oh, he ran away. Go this way. Which way did he go, George? He's, he wants him so bad. Callie. What? Callie. Oh. Maybe? Calm down. I don't know. He's trying. Getting aggressive. 30 seconds on Baron, a minute on the Dragon. That's number four for CLG. That Probably. Just, that just seems like frustration to me. That seems like we're 10k gold down. We have to make a play. We have to find a way to get back in this game, whether it's a hero play or not. Well, I'd say yes. Yeah. I'd say go for take yeah. that. Hashtag take that fight. It's the new thing. See Slushi at the turret. You still have Nian for a bit of wave clear, but... With the sheer power of CLG right now, that wave clear is still all getting to the turret. They're not able to get the minions away fast enough. It resulted in four kills in favor of CLG last time. It was at an inhibitor, so it's only going to be harder to guard these outer turrets. CLG actually giving a little bit of breathing room, though, as the objectives start to spawn here, and they get their wards back into place. Once again, the pink ward formation for CLG around the Baron Pit. You can see how they ward it up. They ward up in that first bush that you would expect people to ward. They ward on the opposite side of that wall so that they can get hooks. Yeah. And if somebody walks up and tries to clear it, they get this type of fight. Wasn't this the fight they pretty much exactly took as well? Right to the Baron, straight up the river. A lot of damage, however, onto the back members of Counter Logic Gaming. Those are the ADs getting hit. But you see the tanks spread, and they still have a crap load of health on them. 16 to 4 now, 32 minutes into the game. Teammate trying to. March to the beat of their own drum as they take down mid, knowing they'll lose Baron, but they'll get a bit more pressure and maybe a good fight that puts them on an inhibitor soon. 
it's going to be very, very hard for them to find that advantage. But right now, they're doing what they can to keep themselves. Good to cut good. your losses, but TP is still up from Zion's part. Right. There it is. Oh, it's going to be the cutoff. It's either the cutoff and kill, then the dragon, Burn. or they just let the rest of the team kill him. The attacks from Nian. He has to go over the minefield. Hit by the first one. Hops the next two. And he is going to be quickly cooked up. The rest of the team goes Whoa. after Slushy. They're going to be quickly onto Nian as he tries to hop over the wall. It's just one harpoon and one flame spitter. Zion Spartan's been really on top of his play this game. Yep. That's that's an investment as a jungler myself that you gank a lane and he takes over the game. You're like, that's that's my boy. That's my boy. I saw <laughs> I saw him minute three. And now he's everywhere. Happy to gank for him. Pick up his kids from school. It's just that kind of guy. It's just that kind of guy. That's like when you, you pick up your kid from school and then your kids the next day is immediately like the CEO of a company. <laughs> Whoop! Chain of corruption. Don't worry, it's like one of the most missed ultimates in the game. You don't it's have true. to all the, the width on that ultimate is travel time. <laughs> There's the first inhibitor turret going down here as CLG starts to put their foot down. Very nicely played. The same spot where they caught a fight just a few minutes ago. And 506 pole belter, 907 Zion Spartan. Everybody playing very well. And if it was questions and eyes on pole belter for that new mid laner, we've seen him in multiple, you know, fight situations. The 1v1 with Cali Trolls that he came out on top of. He's definitely providing the damage that the team says they know he can bring to the table. The fact that he's able to hold up versus a Ziggs in lane on Verse. Yeah. And put him actually behind in CS, forced to go yeah. to his wolves over and over again, which stops him from roaming to side lanes, roaming to help out his mm -hmm. team. And Porpoise Pops really had very little impact this game in the early game. He had an advantage right off yeah. the start. That, yeah, as you're We're saying, that aggression it. helped a lot because Slushy wasn't able to help Porpoise when Xmithy was like, hey, my entire red side is gone. Well, Let's travel. Exactly. When your entire red side is taken as a jungler, you feel really bad. But then to go <laughs> to the other side and check it, you're like, oh, yeah, I, I, I guess I get his now, even though I'm like a minute behind on my route. Uh, yeah. And you still get it. It's a really... And then you kill it, bottom. Line. It's a strange feeling. You feel like you shouldn't have been able to get away with it, but you did. You just don't tell anybody. Yeah, especially with the help of your Whee! mid laner. Who just shoves the wave up and stops the other mid laner from Look at that. on you. That's incredible. All the pressure. Yeah, pressure they, knew, they knew they were going to get a few guys out of that and lose a turret and be able to guard back. But now they get no one, and they still lose the turret. CLG is really dancing circles around teammate right now You're running as around they now. enter. It's yeah. exactly what I said in Champions like where this right, composition right. is made for picks. This composition has some team fighting behind it now with the Varus. And they shred turrets. They take objectives very quickly. Yeah. And with the rotational play that you have with the TP, I thought it was going to be a Twisted Trade or something. But the TP and the Rek side combined just creates so much wave clear pressure in side lanes that teammate is forced to answer in that way. I think you almost get the same thing with more power out of a TF in this comp. It could still work. You get that clear, you get that power. Pobalt or however, he's saying whatever. I'll play the Lavarius 506. Yeah. Muramana also finished three other items in his inventory. Double lift, still on the front line. Feels like they're a little <laughs> more ahead and he can go into a dangerous position. Oh my gosh, that damage. At least 200 each across Porpoise and Cali on a double lift. Whoa, Yo. baby! Going for the long ride on that one. The double lift express takes Cali Trolls all the way past the second tier turret. It's going to be Zion dropping people with the flame spitter. Nian doing what he can to get himself back in a favorable position, but he's just put in the ground. That's going to be by the hands of Poe Belter. Slushy's forced to run, and CLG have teammates base in their eyes. The drag all the way back for Cali Trolls. They read that aggression they read the frustration that he's been experiencing this game and that's going to be CLG on the Nexus taking down team eight the twisted advance that took you from coast to coast is the one that takes you down Cali Trolls goes down too deep go to sleep and CLG will finish off the Nexus 37 minutes in 22 to 5 counter logic gaming takedown team eight And that was just a display of what they could get away with in that early game. Yeah. And then snowball it. Zion Spartan played that beautifully from start to finish, from the laning phase, setting up the part where he looked vulnerable. Smithy yeah. comes in behind Cali Troll, and they just snowball from there. And that put teammate in a situation where they were slowly but surely losing every lane. Porpoise Pops had to put his attention across so many different points. And CLG having the pressure in every yeah. lane, bringing it home for a victory. What a game.
Looking across the board just at the kill participation, 19 from Zion out of 22 kills, and you kept saying it, the word teleport over and over again. And the fact that they could use that first kill from McSmithy to make all of those teleports count. Just about every single one resulted in another kill. Slushy, Slushy was flashed in for Cali Trolls and Mick, tried to help him. Cali Trolls was left by himself. It does seem like Team 8 has kind of gone away from the strategy of we need to go crazy, but I think they've actually tempered themselves too much, and they weren't even trying anything this game. Yeah, that seemed to be, we're kind of adjusting. I wanted to see more moves from Porpoise Pops, yeah. but Cali Trolls was read like a book this game, and it's become a tendency of his to try and overextend, even when they're in the lead, to try and look for a fight. I remember back when he was diving a Morgana that had a black shield on him in a previous game last season, and then gravity just turned immediately after that yeah. because he was too far up, too extended. Smithy having a fantastic game out of the jungle on Rek'Sai this time. Yeah. Really Very good kill the early game. I'm sure, while loving Zion Spartan's lane as well for doing what he did, he didn't really have to go to anybody else's, so he was able to farm as well. That's exactly what Sej or Porpoise was doing on Sej to try and get back in the game, so he knew he already pressed the advantage he needed to, and the rest of the team did what they had to to win the game. Yeah, the fact that you're getting an advantage in a Maokai versus Rumble lane, and then you can kind of leave that lane alone for a long time, expect he gets to do whatever he wants on the map, not a lot of gank potential or kill potential on a Ziggs, so you can kind of leave that lane alone. Then after that, it's like, if you're winning a matchup where it's a farm fest in the mid lane and you're winning a mismatch in the top lane, which is your duo lane, yep. the Sivir versus Callista matchup, then you're in an extremely good spot to start running away with the game from there. And that's exactly what CLG did. You could see even after, and this is something that's a little, a little more fine, but you see when they're taking turrets, they sit there and they're like, okay, we took a turret. They back up a little bit and they see where teammate goes. And they're like, oh wait, we can wrap around here and get another turret top lane. Right, in the bot lane, that's what they did. And then teammate tries to do that themselves and they get punished for it because CLG knows how to punish those types of moves and where people are being allocated to. So it's a very, very kind of like micro thing where you're moving people around, but it's working out very well for CLG that they're exploiting that in other teams. <laughs> working out very well as they come up with another win. And right now we're going to send it down to the side stage where Kobe is standing by with half of CLG's rush hour.